Hi folks, today is September the 9th, 2020, the final deadline for the PMT year, the day America fell. Stick around. Hi folks, Kenny the Vape and Heed back again. Um, and just a bit of a chit chat about the, the state of affairs in America. Um, as today, I've recorded this today on the 9th of September 2020, 2020, blah, 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 words, okay. um, it's the final deadline for the PMTA in America. Um, well, PMTA, in a nutshell, I mean I've got some notes here so do excuse me if I look down now and then. PMTA is a pre-market tobacco application. Um, which basically means application, you have to file the FDA to stay in business after the regulations of it come into effect. Um, so that is today. One moment please. I'm having a bit of a vape. Um, for anyone who's interested, I'm still vaping on the Ardent. On the heavy hitter, lovely fucking setup. up. Um, but yeah, basically, a little bit about the PMT is if you had a product on the market or something similar around about 2007, February 2007, you had to go, you could go through a much simpler process. Um, because obviously 2007, there wasn't a lot of VF products about, and um, so. Basically, you know, the tobacco products such as cigarettes were put under a, like a big umbrella type of thing. They were all labelled with the one thing. So, vaping, you know, is pretty relatively new um, since then. So, they've got to go through the whole PMT process from scratch. And that's bad. So, basically... In short, 99% of all vape products have to go through this process. Um, it includes importing of e-liquid, um, even vape stores that make e-liquid, um, if they intend to, you know, if they intend to stay in business. Um, it also includes products you might not even really know, such as you've got drip tips, atomizers, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, which may need a separate application, not to mention, you know, combinations of, 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 of what's mentioned, you know. Um, so, the main thing is what it's for is you, you've got to demonstrate that your product is appropriate for the protection of public health. So, you know, it's a bit of a hard thing to do. But, um, basics for what these you know, companies and shops need to submit our product samples and labels. They've got to produce scientific analysis. They've got to produce the manufacturing process, the principles of operation, usage patterns, appeal to customers and perceptions, and chances of misuse. Um, so, that's basically probably what it is. I mean, it was never intend to be an easy process you know it was um, devised to make it difficult for tobacco companies to bring new products to the market you know and um, you know them basic requirements you know are challenging themselves and um, you know for the for the evidence and stuff you've got to get you know like but you know it is what it is but the, the thing that's going to cause the big problems is the cost they reckon it's kind of estimated that each PMT will cost, are you ready for this, $117,000 to $466,000 per item. Bloody hell, so, you know, that's for every mark, every product you want to keep in the market, including, you know, your different age use lids and your, you know, your different nicotine levels. Um, and for small businesses, the cost of that is going to make them shut up shop. My concern 
obviously with a lot of companies not being able to afford this or businesses or small businesses and shops is what will happen afterwards um, I believe the black market is going to be fucking huge absolutely phenomenal um, you know if your local brick and mortar shop around the corner can't afford all this stuff they're going to close it's as simple as that so there's going to be thousands and thousands of small businesses closing thousands and thousands of people losing their jobs um, it's going to be catastrophic for you know a small business I mean maybe some of the bigger businesses you know you know them them estimated costs are fucking phenomenal so it's just basically you know what happens next type of thing and like I said I think the black market is going to fucking thrive absolutely thrive um, you know they had all the stuff about the scaremongering that they've done over the years you know with mods blowing up people's faces then we had the big you know the THC pod outbreak so to speak but you think about it right if all this kind of stuff goes on the black market I think it's going to be more da more dangerous because simply the fact that it's going to be unregulated. Um, you know, you could get cheap and chatty mods that might be unsafe, that could potentially, you know, malfunction, blow up, you know, or just, you know, break. Um, you know, that's just your hardware. My concern is your age use. How do you know what's going to be put in it? You've seen the carry on with the THC when they added that chemical to thin it out, which basically fucking, you know, give you serious lung problems. What's to say that the black market age use makers aren't going to do a similar thing? You, you know you sell it, age use is mainly PG and VG with the flavouring, but you know, what's going to be in these flavourings? What nicotines you're going to get? You know, if you can't buy nicotine, Where's the nicotine coming from? You know, that's, that's the big, big thing in it. So yeah, guys, you know, it's, I know it's a case, you know, it shouldn't be like, but it's a case of like, you know, us in the UK told you so, you know, and it's, it's, it's down to the, the road that advocates, advocacies went. Um, you know, they haven't, they haven't lobbied the politicians type of, type of thing, um, which we did, um, you know, and we, we, we more or less said to the politicians, you know, you do anything with this vape and you will not be voted in the government, whatever. But also, you've got this MSA agreement as well, which I believe is due either this, this year, next year, um, where the repayment on the bonds based on it. Um, you know, need paying back, and with the hit tobacco's took, there's no sales. So therefore, a lot of states are going to be in the red, um, or even you know bankrupt because they can't afford to do this. So this is another reason why vaping has been attacked because it's had a massive impact on tobacco sales. So you know, with all with all this in hand, you know, I mean. You know, to any of my fellow American vapors out there, you know, I'm so sorry for you guys, I really am. You have got tough, tough times ahead. Um, you know, will a lot of the vapors go back to smoking? Because that's obviously what these governments want you to do. So you are pieing, you know, cigarettes, which is putting money in their coffers at the end of the day. They don't give a fuck about your health, man. They don't give a monkey's chucky about your health. All they're worried about is lining their pockets and fucking filling up their balances with the good old American dollar. That's all they're invested in. It's all about the, the money people, you know. They don't give a fuck about you, your health. You know what I mean? So, I thought that was just a quick one, you know, to just technically say, you know, my condolences to all you vapors out there in the US, you know. I think the shit has finally hit the fan for you guys. Um, you know, hats off to the guys that went out and done protests and rallies. But again, I think it's too little too late. Um, so it is D-Day for the vaping industry in America. Um, and all I can do is just wish you all luck and the very, very best for the future. 
um, and just hope you all don't go back to the smoking. You know. So that being said, I'll wrap this one up now. I've been Kenny the Vape and Heed. Stay safe, vape safe. I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Cheers now. Bye. Thank you.